You know, as a biologist, you really want to understand the things that the organisms do. Photography is that way to sort of make me understand my environment and what's out there. My first trip to Mongolia was almost four years ago. What struck me about Mongolia was just the sheer openness of it. It's home to some of the, lo the largest remaining intact natural systems on the planet. So it has one of the largest grassland systems, which is about 69 million acres. And it clearly has the motivation of the people to want to make sure that it conserves those places. You know, they have some significant challenges ahead. The, the country has leased for exploration um, and development about 40% of the surface of the country. That is and will be a significant challenge for them to understand and to decide what's at stake with, um, with that development and what, the, what, what could be impacted, what could be lost. And so what we bring with Development by Design is a way for the country and the people of Mongolia to be able to understand the ramifications of different development scenarios. As part of the work on the Eastern Steppe, we did about a two and a half week trip where I'd say on average we were driving, you know, 12, 14 hours a day. As part of those trips, we've had to hire drivers. Over the course of that trip, Altai, who's a driver in my vehicle, you know, I got to know a little bit about him and, and let him know a little bit about me. And he had two sons, both that were the same age as my two boys. So right there, you know, we had that kind of connection and, and talked a lot about our kids and things that they do. And in addition to being a driver, Altai was a herder. So he still maintained a herd of animals that he would graze. But he also financed and did ninja mining. Ninja mining is really small scale mining where, you know, a handful of individuals will go in and mine for gold or whatever other mineral they're working on. And they get their name of uh, ninja miners from the fact that they, they often wear on their back these big bowls that they use for mining and have maybe a shovel and a pick crisscrossed across their back. So they look like teenage min, uh, mutant ninja turtles. In some cases, ninja mining, although it's really small scale, can have a significant impact on on the environment. From talking and communicating with Altai during that trip, I mean, it, it really struck me that, you know, if we want to create a solution that balances conservation and development, you know, we really have to make sure that it provides for what people need. I mean, again, he was a father, has two kids, two boys the same age as, as my two boys. And, you know, I know that I would do anything within my power to give my kids a better life. You know, that's all this guy was doing. And so, again, if we really want conservation to work, we've really got to be thinking carefully about what people need and what people want. Clearly, Mongolia is going to develop its natural resources. They're going to mine and they're going to develop their infrastructure. And, and those things are good things. Those things are going to have positive impacts on the quality of life of their people. But how they make those decisions, how they develop, where, the pace, when, those are things that they have a luxury to really figure out and make sure that in 100 years, they'll be happy with the decisions they make today.